Hello, in today's video I'm going to walk you through how to install Void Linux and configure it for a desktop user. Now, I'll be doing this on a virtual machine, but the process will be the same for bare metal as well. So to start off with, you will want to download an ISO from either voidlinux.org or voidbuilds.xyz as downloading from voidbuilds.xyz will save you some updating later after the install but personally I still recommend just using voidlinux.org because you know we can verify the owners of the site and all that it just feels more secure to go to voidlinux.org than a third party website so once you have that ISO downloaded, you're gonna to want to burn it to and to a flash drive. And how you're gonna to want to how you're gonna do that is gonna depend on your operating system. For example, if you're on Windows, you use Rufus. If you're on Linux, you can use DD or something like that. But once you have that USB created, you want to boot up that USB. And again, it's gonna depend on on your system. So. On Dell systems, it might be F2 or F12 for a one-time boot menu to select the USB. Um, if you're installing Void Linux, I'm going to assume you know how to boot from a USB by now. So, let's start the virtual machine and just walk through it. I'm trying to keep my pace faster because I tend to ramble too much in my other videos, I feel. There we are. So Void Linux 5.3. And you'll be given a prompt here and if you read the instructions, they will tell you the login is root void linux and the installer binary is void installer now if you ever installed a bsd or windows xp or something like that this will look very familiar it's a very familiar cll or cli style interface keyboard set that to whichever keyboard layout you're using most likely, if you're in my part of the world, it is US. And in fact, I believe US is a default for Linux. Well, anyways, network. If you have a um, an Ethernet cable, this is a process of next, 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 next. If you have Wi-Fi, you'll have to enter in your SSID and all that. But for me, I'm on Ethernet, so next, next, next. Oh, we're done. So source, and this is a very important step. So you're going to want to use local no matter what. If you're using the void, well, you know, you want to use local no matter what. You can update later, but um, there's a bug right now where installing from network will actually cause your new user and you're creating in a later step to not be made. So just use local, which will just download your packages from your local ISO instead of downloading them over the network. And I reported this bug a while ago, January 16th, and it's something to do with PAM or something, I think, but I don't know. They still haven't fixed it, and it's kind of infuriating, but it is what it is. So anyways, set your source to local. This is what I mentioned the uh, void builds for earlier. If, if you trust them and all that, you can download a newer ISO and use a local source there, and then you have less to update once the system's installed. Something to consider. Hostname, void VM. This is basically what your system's gonna be called by your other computers on the system, so name it whatever you want. I'm gonna name mine void VM. Locale. You'll have to do some research on what your locale is, but odds are, again, if you're in America, it's EN, US, UTF-8. 
time zone. Enter your time zone. Again, if you're using void, I'm assuming at this point you know what your time zone is. For me, I am on the far east coast, so American New York. Set, set system root password, enter a very secure password. User account, name, name your uh, new user, whatever you want. We'll call mine Prez. Secure password, secure password. And here you can add the user to new groups if you need to. I don't really think you need to. Once you get Dbus installed and all that, you're not going to need you're not going to need changes at all. These these defaults are very sane. The only thing you might want to change is wheel if you don't want your default user to be able to access sudo. But again, you really don't need it. Also, there's still a floppy group in Linux. You can take a giggle at that if you'd like. Anyways, bootloader. Graphical terminal, yes. Again, another, pro another instance is hitting yes, 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 yes. Unless you have a good reason to just use a graphical bootloader. I have never had a problem with it on any hardware I've used, but I'm sure there's some strange hardware out there that doesn't like it. So partition disks. Da -da -da -da. This is basically just telling you that um, <clears throat> this is telling you that um, reify systems you please run for it. Better to be some Yeah, so this is basically what's saying here is if you're in UEFI partitioning, you have to have a um, you have to use GPT layout and you need a FAT32 partition in with a uh, boot toggle as the very first partition as EFI system partition type. I believe this VM uses BIOS though, so I will not have to do that. But um, if you're going to be using UEFI, there are instructions on the Void Linux documentation for more detail sp on specifically how to do UEFI installs. If I'm not misremembering, so we're going to do DOS new big old fatty drive. Yep, looks good. We're out of here. That that little program is a CF disk. You can you can handle it. It's pretty easy to use. File systems. Now, one thing about Void that sets it apart is that it has a lot of options for file systems, and quite frankly, I don't think there's any reason to use much of anything on a desktop system besides ext4. So we're gonna use ext4. Mount point with a root, because I prefer to have everything in one partition. I generally do not dual boot. Create new file system, yes. And I believe that is right. File systems change, oops. All right, sorry. You have to go down to the next, um, the next step after you set up your file systems for some reason. So then once that's done, it's gonna copy and paste all the packages on this CD to um, your new install directory. <clears throat> oh. Now that we're done, we're going to reboot the system, so yes.
Um, for some reason, it booted from my my ISO again, my live USB ISO. Well, the virtual machine does CD, but it booted my ISO for some reason. You should remove your USB after you install, or whatever medium you're using to install Void from. Anyways, we're booting the Void now. I will say this, the kernel is 5.3.9, I believe. So um, it's fairly recent, but if your hardware is not working, you might have to use a void builds.xyz ISO to get more up-to-date firmware for your device. Probably won't have to do that, but it's uh, worth considering. So I'm going to log in uh, as root here. I'm gonna run a bash. There we go. I'm gonna run a bash shell, just so it's less horrible to work with. And here's all the services we have. Let's see here. I believe Dbus is supposed to be installed by default. Oh, I'm thinking of UDev. We need to turn on UDev too. Uh, but anyways, first order of business. You want to run xpps dash install space dash s u y for which will basically update your repos update or sync your repositories update your packages and say yes to all the prompts this is this is different than syu in arch linux or pacman where syu means to update and upgrade all packages what this what this one means is the same thing but the flag means something different. So S means sync, U means upgrade, Y means say yes. So it looks similar to R, which is why I prefer to write S U Y instead of S Y U because R T is have a habit of doing that. So we're gonna update our packages here, and you can see it's gonna update um XPPS itself. We're not done updating yet. We gotta run it again because now that the package manager itself is updated, we can update all the other stuff. This is what I was talking about saving some time earlier by using a void builds, uh, local void builds install. Or rather, <clears throat> using a void builds ISO and then using a local source install. We'll save you a bit of updating later, but personally, I I prefer to use void linux.org's uh, ISOs because void builds is third party and A bit of a paranoid person. He says running Windows. All right, so now that that's done, I want to use the latest kernel because we're still on 5.3.9, so reboot. I have the CD still inside.
All right, login as root yet again. I think I typed it in too fast. Nope. Run bin bash to get the good shell. And do much services are enabled. All right, so you dev is enabled by default, but we you're gonna probably want to need eat um dbus for processes to communicate with each other, and you're gonna want elog and d for seat management. I have tried personally to live without these things, and I don't know if anyone calls them bloat, but man, that makes your life so much easier. So you know, let me make a link. So ln dash s at csv dbus var service to enable dbus and i believe e login d doesn't need to be explicitly enabled yeah so we just gotta make sure a system we gotta make sure dbus is enabled we might have to log in and out again that's fine so now that that is enabled, you are pretty much done with your Void Linux install. You have Elog and D, you have Dbus, and you have an updated system. Um, if you want to use a ISO with a desktop environment, so such as XFC or something like that, this process is the same. However, you probably don't need to install E log and D and all that. Um, they, I think the XSCE one might use a different seat manager, but anyways, that's how you install. That's how you install Void Linux uh, for a desktop environment, for an end user rather. And uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll get back to you. Oh, uh, one last thing: if you have a laptop, you don't want to install TLP. This is a VM, so I'm not going to do that. But once you install TLP, you want to enable it. Etsy SV TLP VAR service. Just like that. I don't have TLP installed, so enabling that would be kind of dumb. And what that'll do is that'll manage manage your power settings for your laptop for you. And it'll make things it'll make your laptop battery last a lot longer. I I think I've used God, I've used TLP for years now. I use it on every single laptop I have that runs on X. It is tremendous. But yeah, if you have any questions on how to install Void Linux, let me know in the comments, and I'll try to get back to you.